Amen. Good evening to you. <clears throat> it is good to see you in God's house tonight. It's a, a blessing to be back uh, in the house of the Lord. You know, isn't this a special place that we're gathered in tonight? Now you think about this. How, how precious it is uh, to have a place that we can come together, we can meet together and uh, worship the Lord together. And this is a very, very special place, uh, Mount Vernon Baptist Church. And we just thank God for it and uh, thank the Lord for each one of you and, and just being here tonight and, and uh, coming together. Uh, appreciate the songs that have been sung. I thought about uh, Chad's song, Living by Faith. And uh, in Romans 1.17, it says, The just shall live by faith. And uh, a lot of times we look, over, look on at things, as things are going on and we think, well, uh, we'll figure this out. But what we need to do is just trust God and uh, trust Him every day. Uh, we were studying Wednesday night, uh, a couple of Wednesday nights ago. Larry got us started out of Luke chapter 11. Uh, where Jesus was praying, and when he finished, uh, the disciples asked him, said, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And uh, we got to studying in that, and then wound up in it this past uh, Wednesday night as well. But a uh, portion of that scripture in the prayer uh, that Jesus uh, showed them, or an example, of prayer, he said, give us our bread day by day. And, uh, you know, it's not a week's worth, it's not a month's worth, it's not a year's worth, but just trust him uh, every day and uh, just rely upon him. And if we do that, or I can, let me say this, if I did that, I'd be a whole lot better off. So, uh, but just thank God for his goodness uh, to us. I had an had experience uh, Friday, and uh, Friday evening, our, we've got a grandson that wrestles for White County High School, and uh, he's a freshman up there, and, and uh, they were having a, a, a dual meet up there Friday evening, and so Lynn and I went up there uh, to watch him, and I uh, ran into Eric uh, today and told Eric, I said, I... I thought about you Friday night because Eric used to wrestle for North Hall. And uh, I went to see, see Eric when he was wrestling. And the same thing happened Friday night. They, those guys were out there and they were wrestling. And the and, uh, time we left there, I was exhausted. I mean, I was give slap out. because you just. And then I got up yesterday and I was sore all over. I mean, it was just like it. I had I've been out there. But... Uh, it was it was amazing to watch, and uh, I told Eric, I said that brought back uh, some memories uh, when you were wrestling for uh, for North Hall. And uh, but it is, uh, if you've never been to one, you ought to go to at least one. And uh, it's it's an exciting exciting thing to watch, but it's and a blessing also. But uh, it is good to be here tonight. I want to ask you to go back uh, with us to the Book of Acts, chapter number four. Let's go back there. And uh, we're going to go back and just finish up something concerning this. And we were uh, talking about exalting our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We looked at that this morning and looked at some different things uh, in Scripture out of uh, Acts chapter number 4. And we got through verse number 12. And so we're going to pick up, uh, we're gonna, I'm going to read verse number 12 and then we're going to uh, move forward. Uh, from there tonight, but just felt like the Lord have us to come back uh, to this. It seemed like when we left them uh, this morning that there was some unfinished things uh, uh, to mention here uh, in this scripture. So Acts chapter number 4 beginning with verse number 12. The Bible reads like this, it says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there's none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled, and they took knowledge of them 
that they had been with Jesus. And beholding the man which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle hath been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it, but that it spread no further among the people. Let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. And they call them, and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we've seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people. For all men glorified God for that which was done. For the man was above forty years old on whom this miracle of healing was showed. Now think about this scripture for just a little bit uh, here that we read tonight. First of all, I want you to think about what the council thought uh, concerning uh, Peter and John. Notice what it said in verse number 13. Remember up earlier in this, Peter filled with the Holy Ghost, told them, ye men and ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, he said, if we be examined this day, of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he's made whole, Peter said, Be it known unto you all and all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. And then he further declares, Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. And the council here, the Bible says, it says when they saw the boldness, of Peter and John and said perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. When they saw the boldness, Peter and John filled with the Holy Ghost of God stood before that council and boldly declared unto them and exalted uh, the Lord Jesus Christ in the words that they spoke. And the Bible said when they saw the boldness of Peter and John. I want to tell you something that is needed in 2023. is for the children of God uh, to have a boldness about them. I'm not talking about being arrogant about things. But I'm talking about having a boldness uh, to stand and proclaim and exalt the Lord Jesus Christ. These men did. And they saw the boldness. It was recognized by this council. They saw the boldness of Peter and John. And it says they perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. In other words, they had not been to school uh, like these individuals that were part of the council uh, had done. And it says that they were unlearned. They perceived they were unlearned and ignorant men. It says they marveled at this. They marveled at their boldness. They marveled at the way uh, that they stood and they spoke. But notice the next thing about this. 
It says, and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. They took knowledge that they had been uh, with Jesus. They took note. They noted the fact that Peter and John had been with Jesus. I'm going to tell you what, if you spend some time uh, with Jesus, it'll show up. If you spend some time with Him, if you'll spend some time uh, with Him on your knees, if you'll spend some time with Him through His precious Word, I promise you that it'll show up. It'll be evident in your life. You won't have to go around uh, with a Bible uh, tucked under your arm. Uh, you won't have to go around uh, Lord, with, with all the, the T-shirts and the things on uh, that's got the Bible verses on it. There's nothing wrong uh, with those things. But I want to tell you what, if you spend, if you and I spend some time uh, with Jesus, it'll be noted. There are some folks that's going to uh, take notice that there's something different about you. There's something that is real. There's something that is genuine in your life if you'll spend some time with Jesus. How better to spend time with the Lord? When we do, it'll show up. It'll be seen. Notice something else that happens here in this scripture. In verse number 14, and I want you to notice the wording of this verse. It says, And beholding the man which was healed, standing with them. It says, They could say nothing against it. <laughs> Peter and John was standing there, and here was this man that was born lame from his mother's womb, had never took a step in his life. And there he stood. There he stood. And they could say nothing against it. The evidence was right there, <laughs> standing uh, with Peter and John. It was obvious to them. Look at verse 16 and 17. They said, they, they, they commanded them to go aside, Peter and John, and they conferred among themselves. They began to talk among themselves. Look at verse 16, saying, What shall we do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle hath been done by them. And notice this, it says, Is manifest... To all them that dwell in Jerusalem. Everybody knows about it. They've seen this. And they said, we can't deny it. We can't deny that a, a notable miracle has taken place. But look at verse 17. It says, but it, that it spread no further among the people. Let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. You remember this morning we talked about how that the world has a, has a way that they, they feel like that you, you need to shape and you need to mold yourself uh, into the world. And the Bible tells us to be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind that we may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We're not to mold ourselves uh, into the world's thinkings. And I want to tell you this, the, these individuals here said we're going to go and we're going to threaten them and we're going to tell them that they're not to teach, they're not to speak anymore in His name. They're to shut up keep their mouths shut, that this don't spread any further. But you know what? God was in control. He was in control every step of the way. 
And it didn't matter what man said. It didn't matter what kind of threats uh, came to Peter and John's way. God had called them. God was directing them. They were filled with the Holy Ghost of God. And their job and their responsibility was to spread the good news of the gospel. That men and women and boys and girls uh, can hear the wonderful news that Jesus saves. And folks, I want to tell you, it doesn't matter what the world says. It doesn't matter what the world thinks about you. It doesn't matter about any of those things. What does matter is being faithful to God. God's been faithful to us all along the way. We need to be faithful to God. We need to stand and boldly proclaim, as I said, not with arrogance. We need to stand and boldly proclaim because we've got the truth. The devil... Is shelling out a bunch of lies. But folks, you and I have got the truth. That TV screen, a lot of the times, is shelling out a bunch of lies. But folks, I want to tell you what, we've got the truth. It's right here. It's in the Word of God. His Word is truth. And God's called upon us to share this truth. And we need to do it. And to do it boldly. In order for this not to spread any further, they threatened them. They attempted to to shut them up because this religious bunch, these men, Peter and John, they were a threat to this religious group's position. They were a threat to the job that they had. They were a threat. And they thought, well, we've got to stop this, that it doesn't spread any further. Aren't you glad tonight that the gospel didn't stop in Jerusalem? Aren't you glad tonight that Peter and John couldn't be silenced? Aren't you glad tonight uh, for the early believers in the early church that even when the persecution we studied about uh, this morning in our Sunday school, even when the persecution came, uh, that the word of God spread as they went everywhere preaching the word of God. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? It gave us an opportunity uh, to hear. The next thing, we see what the council thought about Peter and John. I want you to notice what the council did with Peter and John. Look at verse number 18. The Bible says, And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus. They were not to speak at all or to teach in the name of Jesus. But very quickly... Peter and John rejected that command. Look at what they said. Verse 19. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you, more than unto God judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we've seen and heard. Peter and John said, we've got a higher power to answer to than this council. (laughs) We've got one that's sitting on the throne. And he's the one that we've got to answer to. And they said, whether it be right in the sight of God, to hearken unto you more than to God, judge ye. They said, for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Remember Peter was the one that made the declaration in Matthew chapter number 16. Thou art the Christ. The son of the living God. Thou art the anointed one. Thou art the one that we've been looking for. We, you're the one that we've been longing for. And Peter and Peter and John said, We've got a higher power than this council to answer to. We're answering to God. And said, We cannot, listen to this. It says, For we cannot but speak the things 
which we have seen and heard. What they saw, what they experienced, seen and heard. Thou art the Christ. And notice what the council does. Verse 21. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go. Finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people. For all men glorified God for that which was done. Christ, the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, was being exalted in this. He was exalted when the lame man was healed. He was exalted when all the people ran to Peter and John. And Peter said, why are you looking on us? By our own power, our own strength, we've made this whole. Christ was exalted when they said, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, through His name, through faith in His name, has made this man whole and given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Uh, Jesus Christ uh, was being exalted uh, in all of that and He's continuing uh, to be exalted because the Bible says here, because of the people for all men glorified God for that which was done. For the man that was healed, the scripture says, was above 40 years old, this man that was healed. And so they found nothing how they might punish them. And all the people were glorifying God. Remember, he he went into the temple walking and leaping. And praising God. He was glorifying God. And all the people now are glorifying God over what had taken place. He was above 40 years old. They couldn't deny this. The fact that this man had been lame from his mother's womb. And now he had strength in his ankle bones. He had strength to stand. He had strength to walk and to leap. And to praise God. And he was right there. And the council couldn't deny it. Last thing I want you to think about is this. Is what Peter and John did upon their release. We've seen what the council thought about Peter and John. We saw what the council did concerning Peter and John in threatening them. Not to preach or teach anymore in his name. And they could not do anything to them at this time. But they further threatened them and let them go. And the Bible says, look in verse 23. It says, and being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priest and elders had said unto them. So they go back to the other disciples or the other apostles and they tell them concerning them standing before the council and all that had taken place in regards to that. And it said that they reported all that the chief priest and the elders had said unto them. Notice verse 24, the next thing that happens. The Bible says, and when they heard that, when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, Thou art God, which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is. The very first thing that they started doing. They began to call upon God. They began to pray. They reported what had happened. And then they lifted up their voice uh, unto God. They began to pray. And they say it in verse 25. It says, Who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up 
The rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against His Christ. That's exactly what the council was doing. They were against Christ. And they were against the things of God. Verse 27. For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together. For to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. You see, it was not a mistake, it was not a slip up that Jesus went to Calvary. He was delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God. It was God's plan. And these individuals carried out the plan of God as evil as they were. And notice what he says in verse 29 in this prayer. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. They had been threatened before the council. They had been let go. They go back and report to the others what had taken place. In this prayer, they're praying and they're asking for the Lord uh, to give them boldness uh, that they can stand and that they may speak His word. That prayer for boldness. And it says, By stretching forth thy hand, to heal just like the lame man had been healed stretching forth thy hand to heal and that signs and wonders might, may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus the council threatened them not to preach or teach any more in His name. Remember, previously in this chapter, it tells us neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. They were threatened not to preach or teach any more in His name. They prayed that God would give them boldness that they could speak His word and that His hand would be stretched forth to heal, that signs and wonders would be done by the name of Thy holy child. Jesus and the Bible says and when I like this verse when they had prayed the Bible says that the place was shaken where they were assembled together God said I'm right here <laughs> I'm right here the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And notice the last part of that verse. And they spake the word of God with boldness. He gave them the boldness to preach and to teach in His name. In spite of the threats. In spite of the attempts to silence them. He gave them boldness. Look at verse number 32. We see the unity. It says, And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that all of the things which he possessed was his own. But they had all things common. And notice verse 33. And with great power 
gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. I'm going to tell you something, church. The world would just as soon in 2023 let the church just be silent. The world doesn't care that you walked inside these doors today. The world doesn't care that you came back tonight and you sit here. The world doesn't care that you sung some songs today. The world doesn't care that you heard the word of God today. The world doesn't care about any of those things. But what rubs the world the wrong way is when we leave this place. We go to our jobs. We go to our schools. We go do whatever we do. And that we boldly, I'm not talking about arrogantly, but we boldly share the good news that Jesus saved. You see, there's salvation in any, there's neither is there salvation in any other. There's no other way. There's no other way. I am yet to meet a person that doesn't want to go to heaven. I am yet to meet a person that doesn't plan on going to heaven when they leave this world. I've never met one. I've never had anybody to tell me, I don't want to go to heaven. I've heard a lot of people tell me that they're planning on going to heaven. I always ask them this question, how are you going to get there? How are you going to get there? Well, I've been good. I treat people right, and I try to do the best I can. You can tell them very quickly that that's not good enough. It's not good enough. There's only one way to heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. I don't care who it is. I don't care how well educated they may be. I don't care how ignorant they may be. It doesn't matter. The ground at the cross is level. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's no big me's, little you's, or none of those things at Calvary. Jesus died for the sin of the world. And folks, what a privilege it is to exalt the Lord Jesus Christ. Every time we witness for the Lord, we're exalting Him. We're exalting Him. Every time that we share Christ with somebody, we're exalting Him. But you know what? He's worthy. He's worthy of that. He's worthy of all. He's worthy. And He alone is worthy. What kind of opportunities will come to us this coming week? What kind of opportunities are going to come to us in the next two weeks? Huh? Now think about it. To exalt the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't have to ring a bell. You don't have to clap your hands together and all those kind of things. Just tell them about Jesus. Tell them about Him. I'm glad... That is a 17-year-old boy that somebody cared enough about me to tell me about Jesus. To tell me about Him. Somebody exalted Him through song. Somebody exalted Him through their teaching. Somebody exalted Him through their preaching. Somebody exalted Him through the lives that they lived that showed me Jesus. What a wonderful thing to know Him. And what a privilege it is to share Him with other people. What a joy. I don't know your heart tonight, but this is a message God laid on our heart for this evening. And I hope that it's been a help to you and encouragement to you today. But that whole third and fourth and going over into the fifth chapter uh, is just amazing amazing to me and uh, these guys and those early apostles they were not badgers 
if they were Baptists, they would have just went on home. After all, everything that they went through. They'd have had a pity party somewhere, had their lips poked out. And they'd say, well, I didn't sign up for this. I didn't think it was going to be this way. But I want to tell you this. This is not our home. We're on our way. But it ought to be our desire as a child of God. If we're saved by God's grace, it ought to be our desire to take as many with us as we can. Bring them to Christ. What a privilege that is. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. He'll come with a song. <clears throat> God, our Father in heaven, as we bow in your presence today, we thank you, God, for the blessings of this day. And thank you, God, just for allowing us to gather here tonight in your house. We thank you, Lord, for every home and family that's represented here. And God, we want to thank you so much for this very special place that we're able to come in here tonight. We want to thank you for your word. We want to thank you for your presence. And God, I pray that you'll help us to boldly proclaim your wonderful grace among those that we meet. God, thank you so much for loving us and caring for us. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the blood that he shed that we could be saved by your grace. I pray you'd give us that boldness. Help us not to be timid, but help us to be bold in sharing our faith with that lost person we meet tomorrow. And we want to thank you in advance for what you're going to do and how you're going to use us for your honor and glory. Help us to exalt you in all things we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's stand our feet tonight. <clears throat> Mitch, what's your number?